My clients often ask me, if I were to choose just one therapy, would I choose hyperbaric oxygen therapy or red light therapy? As a physician working with both therapies in my practice, I'd like to explain how each therapy works and which conditions respond best to which therapy and when you should use hyperbaric oxygen therapy, when you should use red light therapy, or when you should use both. So by the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding and hopefully be able to make the right choice for yourself. In my opinion, to better illustrate this discussion, we should look at how these therapies work in a human body. So let's start with energy production cycle because both red light therapy and hyperbaric oxygen therapy affect mitochondria and specifically how we produce energy inside the mitochondria. Red light therapy works on a specific enzyme that is called cytochrome C that has a photoreceptor. So it receives energy from red light and that flips the switch for energy production inside the cell. Then hyperbaric oxygen therapy comes in by providing more oxygen through pressure that makes oxygen dissolve in plasma and oxygen travels to the cell to take part in the final step of energy production cycle inside mitochondria. We need oxygen as the final electron acceptor there. And that maximizes our energy output. So let's summarize this. Inside the mitochondria, red light therapy helps us turn on the switch for energy production by acting on cytochrome C. And hyperbaric oxygen therapy maximizes the amount of energy we produce inside the cell. When you look through the prism of mitochondrial function, red light therapy and hyperbaric oxygen therapy are not competing therapies. They're synergistic, they're complementary. Therefore, if your health goal is to improve mitochondrial function, improve immune function, anti-aging and wellness benefits, you will benefit much more from using these two therapies together rather than choosing one therapy over another. Both red light therapy and hyperbaric oxygen therapy work on energy production cycle inside the mitochondria, but these are not the only benefits these therapies provide. Let's look at each therapy distinctly and see what kind of benefits are in red light therapy use and in hyperbaric therapy use, and which benefits overlap and which ones are separate for each therapy. So red light therapy is widely used in aesthetics and skin anti-aging because it improves collagen formation and helps to reduce fine lines. It also improves circulation, it helps in wound healing, promotes stem cell activity, and it results in better mood, it improves mental health, and massively helps with detoxification. Light therapy or photobiomodulation is an umbrella term for different color wavelengths of light. And red might be different from blue, white, purple, and green. And of course, we need to look into more detail what each wavelength does. But these are the general benefits of photobiomodulation, including red and infrared uh, therapy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, on the other hand, has more systemic effect. It massively decreases inflammation. It absolutely massively helps with wound healing. It stimulates stem cell production and mobilization. Hyperbaric therapy also improves circulation through angiogenesis. This is the formation of new blood vessels, and it improves collagen production. For anti-aging benefits, red light therapy is more the visible effects of aging. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy are more systemic effects. Although both renew mitochondria and which is essential for anti-aging. So you can see that the benefits overlap, but red light therapy or photobiomodulation has its own benefits, which are separate from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Before we continue, there's something quick I wanted to tell you. I'm giving 30 of you a free access to my 5-day HBOT Sprint. 
It's an event that's happening online, and for the five days, I will send you information on how to use hyperbaric therapy safely and effectively. We will cover areas like how to choose the right hyperbaric chamber, what are the most common mistakes to avoid, and what are the main points in designing a hyperbaric protocol. All this information is applicable to whether you're using hyperbaric therapy for yourself or you plan to offer it to your clients. After those five days, you will have a very clear understanding on where you need to start and what you need to do next. If you're interested, follow the registration link in the video description. Now let's go back to our video. One of the main differences I see between light therapy and hyperbaric oxygen therapy is actually in the cost, in accessibility, and in practicality. So let's think about the length of a session. Hyperbaric session is minimum 60 minutes long, whereas red light therapy can be delivered in 15 to 20 minutes. There are fewer side effects and contraindications associated with light therapy than there are with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And light therapy can be delivered through the wide area of the devices from handheld panels to full body red light therapy beds. Of course, these differ in price, they differ in their intensity, and protocols will differ depending on the device that you use, but entry level devices are actually very affordable. With hyperbaric oxygen therapy, we're looking into different types of chambers and some are more affordable than the others. The ones that are used for home use are probably on the lower price range than the ones that you can see at the clinic, such as multi-place chambers. The length of the session is longer. There's a list of contraindications to hyperbaric therapy and side effects. And if you're interested, I have several videos that go exactly into that, the contraindications, the side effects, and how to use hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And accessibility. Many times you have to travel to the clinic to get hyperbaric therapy sessions. So you can see that there is a big difference in cost, in practicality, and in accessibility of the therapy. And this can influence the decision which therapy to use if you were only to use one therapy. Now that we know about the different benefits that each therapy has, it's time to get to the most interesting part of this video. Which therapy I would choose if I were to choose only one therapy? There's certain conditions for which I absolutely prefer red light therapy. Let's look at these conditions. Pain, even e either it's localized pain or general pain. Red light therapy is absolutely amazing for that. Longer sessions are preferred and longer meaning 30 minutes and more with red light therapy to help with pain syndrome. I would also use a red light therapy if I'm looking to improve skin anti-aging and aesthetics because red light helps to build collagen and reduce fine lines. I would use infrared therapy for detoxification purposes always would be my preferred therapy over hyperbaric therapy. Let me explain why. It helps to massively detoxify heavy metals and other toxins and remove these toxins through sweating. A lot of times when a person has high toxic load and they use hyperbaric therapy for whatever indication, I like to follow with infrared therapy to help them remove the toxins that were mobilized during hyperbarics. There are conditions where I would prefer hyperbaric therapy. This in situations when I need to massively decrease inflammation or when I'm looking for stem cell release and mobilization. For long-term anti-aging effect, I would also use hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Now, for all these conditions that I just listed, you need many multiple session protocols to achieve the results. With red light therapy, whether we're looking for detox, for pain relief, or for skin anti-aging, not as many sessions are needed. And as I said, the sessions are absolutely shorter in red light therapy. 
There are a couple other conditions where I would prefer hyperbaric therapy, such as overall ENT aging. There are specific protocols. I have several videos that talk about the use of hyperbaric therapy for ENT aging. There are many conditions where it's the combination of hyperbaric and red light therapy that absolutely shine. Those include long COVID and post-infectious syndrome. Those include anti-aging protocols, wellness protocols. So many times, both therapies would work wonders, but if you were to choose one, think first about the benefits that each therapy provides and whether or not the provided benefits match your health situation and your health goals. Also look at it from the cost, practicality, and accessibility standpoint. Do you have a hyperbaric chamber at home or do you have to travel to the clinic? Can you actually do multiple session protocols that are required for most of the conditions where hyperbaric therapy is useful? Um, do you have space in your home to put a hyperbaric chamber? Do you have space to put a red light therapy bed or can you just go with a panel? And um, there is a video where I talk about the dosing of red light therapy on my channel. So please watch it and different devices would call for different dosing. If you'd like to know more about dosing red light therapy and how to combine red light therapy with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, please leave a comment and I will make a video about that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.